Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another podcast. A bit of a change this week. It's absolutely foul outside. It's sleeting. It's cold. The rivers are high and brown. I'm full of cold. So instead of venturing out into this foul weather, I'm tucked away in my office. The wood burner's on. I've got a couple of uh, dozing dogs next to me. And I've realised it's exactly a year since I started doing the podcast. So what I thought I'd do is have a little look back and I've chosen four of my absolute favourite podcast moments from last year. So first up, we've got a session check nymphing for grayling, which I did in October last year. Now this is in an urban river in central Sheffield and um, I was using a check tan bug, my favourite type of check nymph, and I was fishing very close up to a factory in fact, right against the factory wall. And as you can hear on the podcast, the extractor fans are on. It makes it very loud. But I got into a fantastic shoal of grayling. It's probably one of the finest uh, urban check nymph in sessions I've ever had. So let's take a listen. Well, I'm actually fishing under the bridge now. Hammering straight away. Right on the money, right on my spot. Another grayling. No net today, I'm just, uh, well, I have got a net on my back, but I'm not really using it. You can just, you can just bring these to hand and unhook them in the water, really. No stress on the fish. What's that, three? Put it in the same place. And in again. Oh, it's, I'll count that one. I managed to touch the leader before he came off. It's four. And so far, they've all been a standard size. But I know for a fact there's some bigger ones, especially towards the top of this run. This is when the uh, volume gets a little bit loud. Fishing. Saw the big extractor fans from the factory. Nice and warm though. Hammering again. A bit bigger this time. slightly bigger this one just taking a bit more effort to get in Seven. Oh, this is a better fish now. Definitely a better fish. Oh, it's come off. That was a lot better. Probably about a pound. I don't think you're going to be able to hear much here. So the river's really speeding up now, it goes very quick. And this is where I've had the uh, the big grayling before in these sections. And what you can do is you can just fish down the, the seam of the current where the, the quick water meets the stiller water. And um, what the grayling do is they'll just sit off the very, very quick water, just on the seam near the bottom. and. That very fast water is bringing lots and lots of food through in a very concentrated area, so it's a prime live for the fish, which is why you'll get the bigger ones here, really, because the, 
they've got the best access for the food. You don't tend to get the shoals as much here, but there's a chance of picking up picking up one or two bigger fish. And you want to fish right up into the, almost the rapids at the top of the run. The, it, so many people um, don't fish this water. They walk over all these big fish, but that's where they are. And it's always, it's always useful to remember that the water on the surface is running pretty much twice as fast as the water down near the bottom so even though it looks unfishable on the surface or you think there's going to be nothing there down near the bottom there's a few rocks for them to get behind and it's perfect for them and these grayling are you know, fast water they love fast water so the next one i've chosen is a dry fly fishing session i had on the Derbyshire Derwent on the Birchin Lee Fly Fishing Club water. I think the reason I chose this was it's evocative of those early spring days when everything's just coming together, the birds are out, there's insects hatching, the, the wild garlic's up on the banks and everything seems kind of promising and hopeful. Uh, and it was a lovely little session. I got in some uh, nice wild brown trout on the dry fly. Right, so what I'm going to do is, is concentrate on the bits of current where the food is concentrated. So the little lines of faster current as it snakes around the rocks. Any of the little areas where we get a white bubble stream coming down the river as well. They're the bits that the fish are likely to be holding in. And we'll uh, just prospect up the different lines and see if anything comes up. So I'm gradually going to going to pick my way upstream and there's lots of lovely mossy rocks in front of me and there's some wagtails oops nearly in the tree wagtails sat on them and um, there looks like a combination of flies in the air I've not seen any upwings it looks like it's mainly midges at the minute but um, I've got quite a lot of experience on fishing this river and there is a decent hatch of olives and the, the trout in here just they do really go um, crackers for those olives and this bit of river is all wild brown trout there's no grayling up here it's too acidic for the grayling uh, and there's no stocking either so it's it's all wild fish And this, uh, it's surprising actually, this fly is ever so small and it's very, very dark olive colour but you can see it very easily. I'm just trying to keep as much fly line off the water as possible at the minute just to reduce any drag on the fly so it gives it a natural presentation. And the wagtail doesn't want to move, it's obviously used to humans pottering about. Now I might have just seen a fish rising upstream actually. I'm trying to keep one eye on the fly that I'm casting and in my peripheral vision another eye on the stream ahead of me just in case anything pops up but there's a, a glide of steadier water and I'm sure out the corner of my eye I just saw a little disturbance in it which made a mental note of where that is and uh, there's some olives hatching now as well that's good that might start bringing them up a bit but yes it was a rise i've just seen it again so it's in the bubble stream and it's about 20 feet ahead of me so i'm going to slowly fish my way up to it and hopefully get a cast over it without spooking it i've been a silly boy and not brought my wading stick again and then um, it's not too bad here actually, I know the river fairly well. Not like the last podcast when I, uh, I got stuck. Uh, the wagtail's gone now. Right, I can probably just about start to cover this fish. Very slowly work my way up behind it. Oh, there's another rise there just to the right as well. That's a bit closer so I'll cover that rise first.
That's moved upstream, I can see it. Right, that's right on it. Bit of drag that time, Let's try again. Ah, it's dragged again. So what's happening here is that there's a couple of different speeds of current the fly line is going across. Um, and it's making the fly drag. So I'm going to put a slack, slack line cast in. And I just give the rod a wiggle as I cast. And it should just put some slack into the line, which means that the, the fly line isn't going to pull the fly down. In fact, there's, I think there's two or three fish in this little run. There we go. Oh, I missed it. Little monkey. He's come up for it again and shied away at the last minute. Let's try another one. Uh, they're only little fish, there's nothing big, but come on, that's gonna go right over him. Yeah, I've missed it again. Ah. This is the, the joy of dry fly fishing when you they're taking and you strike and there's nothing there. Mind you, this it's a size, I think it's an 18 this, so it's a fairly small fly. That should cover him again. Now it's dragged. Let's try again. I might have put him down now, I might have spooked him. I've had two takes at the fly and have... No, he's still coming up. Go on this time. Oh, we've got him. Now he's off again. <laughs> now that was strange. That took just as I was picking off to cast and uh, didn't actually see the take. As I picked off to cast, he was on the end. He was only about three inches. Only a sprat. Let's try again. Yes. We've got him this time. Oh, he's bigger than I thought, actually, this one. Oh, he's a beauty. Let me bring him in. There he is in the net. That's a lot bigger than I thought. But the, I only thought he was a sprat, but there's, a, there's obviously a couple working that glide there. He's about 10 inches, something like that, but he's absolutely pristine. Beautiful wild fish. Buttery yellow underneath and then red spots and lovely dark brown on the back and right we'll just slip the uh, slip the fly out and we'll pop him back. The beauty of this um, this bit of river is because it's got the the damn wall that Lady Bowers only what are we I don't know quarter of a mile upstream from here. The water temperature is fairly regulated. It's um, it's one of the few bits of river where if we have a heavy, really heavy, um, big shower of rain, then it doesn't often get washed out here because it's so close to the, the dam. There's not a lot of time to get any runoff in the river. So when all the rest of the derwent is too high and brown, this is often still fishable. Right, I've got to sort this uh, fly out now because big clump of weed round it and it's that green snotty weed that's a pain to get off and it's just going to drown the fly. It might even be worth just taking this fly off, putting it on the patch and putting a fresh one on. The fish that were rising in front of me were feeding on midges actually, not, um, not olives, but these universal flies, they they do a great job of imitating all sorts of different species and when they're feeding actively like that you don't have to be too close to the hatch to catch them. So next I'm off down to Cornwall and this podcast was recorded as part of the UK Saltwater Fly Fishing Festival. And the reason I've chosen this clip isn't because um, of any fish caught on there, it was just the atmosphere of the place. I was out on the beach uh, amongst the rocks before dawn in the pitch black and you got the lights bobbing in the sea on the buoys and the lighthouse and the sound of the waves crashing up the pebble beach so it's very evocative and it was a real magical place to be
Well, good morning and welcome to another podcast. It's a bit of a spooky start. I'm walking down a pitch black lane in the mist, um, right on the coast. I can hear the waves crashing in the other side of the cliff. And out in the in the sea, I can just see the buoys and the lighthouse flashing and ship's horns blowing. Um, I'm in St Moore's in Cornwall for the uh, UK Saltwater Fly Fishing Festival. And this is day two of the competition. It's about six o'clock in the morning. And I'm just heading down this little track, trying to get my eyes adjusted to the dark. Um, and I'm looking for a little gate that's gonna lead me down to the sea. Um, I'm looking for a little mark that I fished yesterday evening where I had three lovely bass um, in the last half an hour of the day. Um, there's a little gully where the tide was washing in, but we're, we're pretty much going to be on uh, full tide, and I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to get down, although I can just see the coast now. You can probably hear the waves coming in a bit. Uh, this is my little gate here, could be. I can't quite see. Maybe it's a bit further on, but... This looks like the mark I was fishing yesterday. Um, I'm the only one here, I can tell you that much. And being on the in the coast, on your own, in the mist, in the dark, is well, it's quite nice. It's, as anyone who knows me, I am fairly miserable. And I do like being on my own. Here's my gate. Um, I do open this tent. There we go. Um, conditions wise, it looks absolutely perfect. Bit of drizzle, there's a little bit of wind. Um, tide is either fully in or just turning or thereabouts. I've found my steps now. Yes, it looks absolutely perfect. Um, it's a great location, St Moore's. There's no commercial fishing in this particular area, so there's plenty of bass, and there's mackerel, there's pollock, um, we've got garfish, we've got uh, wrasse. Um, right, I need to find my little... Yeah, so yesterday the weather wasn't particularly good at all. Very bright, warm and flat, and the mark I was fishing, which was a deep mark, I could pretty much see all the way down uh, to the bottom. In, a, whoa, in about 40 foot of water, try not to trip up and break your neck first thing. Didn't realise there were some rocks here. Check. Right, here's a little gully coming in here. I just checked the time. Check it's past 6 o'clock, which is the start of the comp. But I think we'll start oh, trying to get over these rocks in the dark. Oy. <laughs> I don't want to go in just yet. At least yesterday I didn't go in till the last half an hour. And started the day with wet shoes. As the as the light gets up, sorry about my out of breath, I'm just scrambling over some sharp rocks. As I uh, as the light gets more as it, oh into a rock pool with my left foot straight away. <laughs> Right, so here's a little bay, um, oops, rock pool with my right foot, now is that a rock pool, no, Just get my breath, it's actually quite mild. Um, I can't actually see what's in front of me here, but I'm gonna start casting and fishing. The bass tend to be very close in. So we'll see what happens.
from Cornwall then, right up to the Yorkshire Dales. And this next clip is from a podcast on the River Swale. Um, and the reason I've chosen this one is because it contains three of my favourite things in fly fishing, really, which is prospecting with an upstream nymph. It's on a drizzly, grey overcast day, and it's for wild brown trout on a rain-fed river. One of my favourite types of fishing, this prospecting with the upstream nymph. Right, we're just coming onto a, what looks to me like a, a stretch of fishier water. We've got a riffle ahead and it's just created a little current stream that's, oh, there we are. <laughs> nice take then, missed it. It's just created a little current stream which is meandering its way down the river and that would be a, an area where I think we might get into a fish or two and that was a, the line stabbed away there and I uh, was too slow. I think what I might do as well is actually have a, a dabble downstream from here when I've covered the water ahead of me. The river's about, I don't know, 40 foot across, 35, 40 foot across. Ahead of me I've got the old stone bridge. Oh, there we go, into a fish. Nice. Just where I thought the beat. It's not a bad one. Oh, it's not bad actually, half a pound. Too full, let's try and get him in. He's gone downstream into the current and he's pulling and he's pulling and he's shaking his head. And I don't want to give him line because if he gets into this, he's going to go, oh, I'm going to have to bully this fella in. Come on, fella, let's bully him in. Let's bully him in. Oh, he's off at the last minute. Quick release. Well, that was always going to happen, I'm afraid. It was uh, what I've got behind me is a very, very fast bit of water. And if he'd got in that, it would have been a real nightmare to get him back. Um, so I tried to bully him and he was two foot away from the net and he, uh, he came off. That's just the way it goes. Flies are still okay. He was just off the, uh, that riffle there. It was a lovely take. Let's put another one out there. I say it feels a fishy day today with the weather as it is. It's a perfect day for fly fishing. I can swap hands on the cast now. I think I've been was having to cast over my wrong shoulder because of the trees, but I'm just further enough across the river. Oh, there's another take there, I think. To cast over my right shoulder now. Oh, geese attack. Probably only casting about 20 foot or so of line. Keeping it Keeping it nice and tidy. I don't like having long lines snaking all over the river. It's very easy to lose control of them. And if you do get a take, you're never going to set the hook and uh, control the fish. I'm in again. Right, let's see if we can stop this one getting downstream. Of his. He's a bit smaller, this fella. Yes, he's in the net. Super duper beautiful little wild brown trout about... I don't know what to say. Ten inches, but he's very fat. He's not been there. Uh, he's not been short of food. Hook's fallen out in the net. We'll drop him back. Well, that's two out this riffle, and that's just this first bit. I've not I've barely. I've barely moved since I started fishing. Now that took the. Uh, that took the little pheasant tail on the dropper. That one. Oh, another take, I think. Missed that one. There is, um, just fishing as the riffle has scoured out the uh, little pool or glide below. is always a, a great place because the fish are stacked up at the top um, just before the riffle enters the pool. And uh, if you imagine the river is a conveyor belt of food, that's the, the first lie where the uh, fish can get to the food. So it's a prime lie, really. And they get first dibs on all the insects and bugs that are coming down into the pool. And we're in again. That's another brownie. Oh, was a... I mean, there must be several fish just stacked up in the front of this pool. 
And this looks like it's going to turn into one of those um, red letter days. But when the river, the weather and the fish. And he's taking the dropper as well with a pheasant tail on. Yeah, so he's took the pheasant tail as well. Right, another, another one in the bag. So that's two in the net and one lost. And I think I've only been fishing 10 minutes. That's not like me on a podcast. Normally it's, normally I'm struggling and battling to, to get a fish. Well, I'll just check the flies look in order. Yeah, we all look good. Right, let's see what else is lurking in the top of this riffle. And they were right up as well, just, just before the white water. Right at the top of the riffle is where I've been getting them. Another take. Missed that one. <laughs> I'm getting jittery now. Every little movement of the line I'm, uh, I'm striking. Right, I think I've uh, I've probably fished this riffle out, so there's a couple of more casts to the right of me, I think, just under the trees, and then it goes very, very shallow and bouldery. But we'll, we'll work our way upstream. Right, it's all boulder strewn, very shallow. Nothing really worth fishing for here. Well, I hope you enjoyed listening back to those memories as much as me. Thank you so much for listening. And don't forget, if you want any more information on our fly fishing coaching, it's www.peaksflyfishing.com or for any of the flies featured in the podcast, it's shop.peaksflyfishing.com. Until next time, thanks and bye-bye.